There's been a invites only conference on terrorism and security in Auckland over the last few days, largely prompted by the woke reaction. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to be blunt about this and it might outrage you. The woke politicised reaction to the tragedy of the mosque shootings. Um, the tragedy of the mosque shootings has been abused and the death of those people has been abused by a government keen to make political capital out of it. And unfortunately, small people who, small groups of people who claim to represent the Muslim community. There is much pain there and clearly there is anger and regret. But our response to the mosque shootings as a country has been illogical and at the end of the day will be damaging to, or at present, is damaging to our democracy. And part of it was that we must do more to hunt out terrorists, even though Brenton Tarrant, as I have said, was not a terrorist. And how do we do that? We dob each other in. We set up a Stasi-type uh, system where everyone is paranoid about disinformation and everyone sees Nazis everywhere. And for the last year or more, the government has been carefully building a world of deceit that allows that to happen. They have established groups like the Disinformation Project, whose life, it would seem to me, are the thought police, and go around holding secret meetings with the news media and hunting down people they deem to be threats to society online. They are completely unaccountable. We do not know who pays for them, and they will not be interviewed by any journalist who is likely to be, to be critical of their activities. They work in cahoots with a state-funded media who receive millions in funding on the grounds that they acquiesce to government and follow government policy and they ask the right questions. And amongst those who are getting the money is every media, major news media organisation in the country. But what is so concerning about the developments of this week is that I would say, and I talk particularly about Rebecca Kitteridge as head of our Security Intelligence Service, she is someone who I always have always had incredible respect for. But it now seems that she has joined the rush to the police state. And we now have a very, very powerful group of people, the mainstream news media, academia and the government, and the bureaucrats, the agencies of state, have all got together on the same page to create a climate of fear around violent extremists, which is completely unjustified on the real figures we have before us, completely, and the history of this country. Create a climate of fear to scare New Zealanders into spying on each other and giving up their freedom of speech. That is exactly what is happening. That is not a conspiracy. It is observable fact. And this ridiculous guide published by Rebecca Kitteridge really is to my mind, the most disturbing piece, the most disturbing piece or government publication I have ever seen in my life in New Zealand. Um, most concerning to me is that I guess Rebecca Kitteridge is now telling us that it used to be what were the most, you know, what motivated people to terrorism. Um, often it was uh, religious ideology, right? or ethnic or racial ideology is what encouraged people towards terrorism, what we used to call terrorism. What's most concerning is that Rebecca Kitteridge has added a new dimension or area to what you might call terrorism. And I want you to listen to what she now identifies as something that helps identify a, a terrorist. Not their religion, not their race, but this third group has emerged, those motivated by politics. And so it could be the COVID measures that the government took, or it could be other policies that are interpreted as, as infringing on rights. Uh, and and, and it's a, what I sometimes describe as a kind of hot mess of, of ideologies and beliefs, um, fueled by conspiracy theories. Yeah, so this is really concerning. What Rebecca, Rebecca Kitteridge is now saying is that you may be deemed a terrorist simply for your political beliefs. Simply because, and I know I call you nutters, and I know I laugh at you conspiracy theorists, 
but I don't think you're terrorists. I, I think the vast majority of you are a little bit disturbed, but I don't think you're terrorists. Um, from what we have heard yesterday and from what that, that very chilling, chilling clip, disagreeing with a government policy could now get you branded a terrorist. That is the, the road we are walking down. And if you can't see how dangerous that is, then, then boy, we've, we've really drunk the Kool-Aid being pumped at you by state-funded media. Um, and I'm telling I, I, and, you, know, people might say, oh, Sean, you're just doing this for ratings or for clicks. No, 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 no. I really, really believe, and I find it hard to believe how quickly um, we are accepting this rubbish, and I, I find it hard to believe that anyone with any skerrick of journalist and journalistic integrity can current... I mean, basically, our mainstream media said, oh, isn't this great? Um, instead of being doing what they should do, protecting the public's interest. But, but you, you heard Rebecca Kitteridge just opposing the government's COVID message is part of perhaps being a violent extremist. What a load of crap, Rebecca Kitteridge. What a fear-mongering load of rubbish. Um, and Adam Hollingworth, the reporter there, and the newsreaders and everyone else, just take it. As our freedoms and rights are eroded, and as the government um, moves towards setting up a politically correct, woke police state. There you go, I said it. Politically correct, woke police state.